This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the XP Pen Artist 22R Pro. Yeah, I know, long name there. But what it is, is their latest 22 inch pen monitor for artists. So this is a monitor with pen input. No touch, and no, it's not a computer. You need to plug this into a computer. In this particular case, to deal with constrained space here, I'm actually using a Lenovo Tiny PC that we recently reviewed. You can plug it into a laptop, a desktop, you get the idea, Mac and Windows compatible. Like I said, it's their highest end offering yet. So what does that mean? What are the new improvements here for something that is $699, cost $700 in the budget pen monitor lineup? That's uh, kind of expensive, but certainly more affordable than the Wacom Cintiq 22, which is $1199. So what they've done is they've gone with a single USB-C connection solution. Don't worry, you still get the old-fashioned way of doing it too. The USB and the HDMI cables are in the box as well, but particularly for those of you using something like a MacBook Pro, a single USB-C cable to a Mac that only has USB-C is nice, and it'll work with Windows computers too, or like this little Windows mini desktop. Now with the Windows folks out there, you need to have USB-C that supports display out. Most of them do, but there are a few that don't for that to work. Otherwise, it's a fallback to the older style of cables. So yeah, all the cables are in the box. That's cool. Also, the color gamut has improved, and we'll talk about the color gamut specs in a while. But it's nice. It's a bit better than the Cintiq 22s. Not going to complain. Still, it's not laminated glass. What does that mean? There's a little bit of an air gap that you can see. Now, I've seen a lot worse, and on these the budget pen monitors are getting better and better, but you can still see that there's a glass layer over the actual display or digitizer. It's not the nice laminated look like you'd see with the Cintiq Pro, which is considerably more money, or even with something like a Surface Pro 7 or something like that. Laptops and convertibles these days all have laminated displays so you don't see that gap. It has an anti-glare film on top of the display. I don't have any issues with it other than the fact that, boy, does the pen squeak. Yeah, I've seen this before, but this one is super squeaky. Will it wear down? Maybe. Well, the pen there's a little, option, a little holder here that is included. You can screw it into either side. comes with a mini screwdriver to do that. You get two pens in the box, which they often do. That's nice. And it takes only one kind of nib. So this isn't like the Cintiq line where you can choose felt nibs, alternative kind of nibs. But you do get this nifty pen holder right here. So you get eight spare nibs when you unscrew the top here. And the other end is a pen holder for your desk as well. It supports over 8,000 pressure levels, which is nice. It's right up there with Wacom and the best that you can get. Also, 60 degrees of tilt support. And unlike Huion, whose drivers are still a little bit more iffy than XP pens, it actually pretty much worked. It was turnkey. Even when using something like Corel Painter 7 Essentials, the wind tab option was on by default, and it works. So that's interesting. You wouldn't think of this as being a wind tab device. It's not Wacom EMR. It's most likely a UC Logic digitizer. Now the pressure curves on this are getting better, but they're still not exactly where I'd like. If you have a light touch with the pen, no matter how far you adjust it in their app, you're not gonna really get what you want if you have a really light touch. Pressure curves have improved, but it's still a little severe. It goes from that kind of light touch to boom heavy, a little quicker than I would like. So if you're doing a real subtle, say, airbrushing to kind of put shading in and somebody's chin or something like that, sometimes they'll get a little whoopsie there and you'll make them quite dark. The pen has two buttons on it. There is no eraser on the butt end, and you can assign the buttons to do whatever you want. Now, you do this inside of the XP Pen app, and under Windows, I found it was a little bit flaky, i.e. I would assign it to be Alt for sampling in Photoshop for one and undo for the other. And sometimes nothing would happen. It actually would ignore that, or sometimes it would stick, but over the next reboot, no more. Also, there's no per application settings, which some of you might miss. Say you're upgrading from a really old Cintiq or something like that feature that you used to have, but you know, old thing, so you want to get something newer, but not too expensive. You can't do that. So you can't have separate button settings and express key settings for Photoshop versus Corel Painter versus Clip Studio Paint. Speaking of the express keys, obviously we have 10 express keys on each side with a jog wheel, and uh, they're on both sides in case you're left or right-handed, so that's nice, and you can program those using the app. The app also handles things like contrast, brightness, and your color temperature as well. Now you can do that using the touch sensitive, slightly annoying OSD buttons here to control it as well, but I'd much rather actually do it in the application because you know these kind of button menus are a little bit fidgety. All right, so one of the selling points is obviously is a little bit higher color gamut than say the more expensive Cintiq 22. How good is the display on this? Eh, 
there's a good and there's bad on this. If you leave it, this is odd actually, if you put it at 100% brightness and leave it at the default 50% contrast, which is where you want to leave most monitors so you don't start to see distortions, then brightness is, you know, in the low 200s for nits. Not so good. If you increase the contrast from 50 to 65%, then the brightness goes up to a little above 300 as we measured 311 nits. But the black levels are abysmal to worse on that. So if at the 50% contrast level, black level is 1.53. With the contrast increase, it goes up to 1.86. Black level is something we usually measure as 0.28 or 0.44. So that means your black are not going to get very black here, and that means the contrast levels are not very good. You can use the dynamic contrast ratio setting, which a lot of monitors has, including this, but all it did was make the whites look kind of dingy, and it didn't really seem to do the job, so I wouldn't go with that option, especially if you can care something about color accuracy if you're doing art. This would be a pen display more for artists, I would say, because photo editors typically care about color accuracy a lot, and this monitor doesn't have that in spades, nor does it have great contrast, so your images are going to look a little more washed out than they really would on most other nice laptop displays these days, for example. In terms of drawing experience, well, it's mostly all good. Like I said, the pressure curve still could take a little tweaking, but there's no fish hooking of lines. The diagonal line jitter is just about zip on this. And drawing curved lines, very smooth. Yeah, it's really quite nice. But it doesn't have the natural feel of a Wacom Cintiq, even the budget Wacom Cintiq. So there's that. Me, in the end, I always want the most natural, most responsive pen experience possible, and I'll give up on other things like cable connection, convenience, a little extra gamut, all that sort of thing. But it's still really good, and if you're looking at something like an old Wacom Cintiq 22 HD, which is, what, 10 years old now, and they don't really, I don't think, sell them anymore, then you look at the price of this and you say, it's pretty darn amazing what you get. It is a great starter big screen monitor for those of you who want to get into drawing and have the space to actually work large. This comes with a robust and adjustable stand, by the way, very sturdy, and it's pre-attached to the monitor for those of you who hate screwdrivers and things like that. So versus the Cintiq 22, obviously this has a few things going for it, including the fact that you get the USB-C single cable connection. You have to go to a Cintiq Pro to get that. The, the display quality, I would still say overall the Cintiq's a little better in terms of things like black levels and accuracy, but this one does have a little bit wider gamut. But the Cintiq's a lot more money, and of course you're getting the best pen experience on the Cintiq. Versus the Huey M Canvas 22 Pro model, well that one used to be pretty expensive, like $900 when it came out, but now it's down to about $550, so it is cheaper. But it doesn't have the USB-C single cable connection, it does have the batteryless pen like this though. But Huey Ann's driver is typically a, a, a little bit more of a headache than even XP pens. So that's the XP Pen Artist 22R Pro. And if you're a budding artist looking for a big screen drawing experience and you don't have a lot of money to spend, not that $700 is exactly cheap, but you know what I mean compared to a Cintiq, then you could certainly do a lot worse than this. The pen response on it, not perfect, but pretty good. The parallax on this, just about none, despite the fact that this doesn't have bonded glass. The, the, the line quality on this is really nice. They are getting better and getting better quickly. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, including tech for artists, and hit that notification bell.